certainly been a difficult, bitter week for many in racing. As we mentioned, the patriarch of the Andretti clan passing Friday near Nazareth, just five days after the tragic death of kart star Greg Moore in the kart season finale at Fontana, the California Speedway. Greg's passing after that wreck early in the Marlboro 500 leaves a huge void and turned Monday night's kart championship banquet into more of a memorial service. Let's head back to Phoenix. Our Bob Diller was with the kart family all weekend long and Monday night. Bob, a very somber mood at the kart banquet back on Monday. Rick, it was truly a sad evening, one with a lot of emotion. But the Kart Series handled the banquet very respectively. And for all you NASCAR fans, if you had to compare Greg Moore to, say, one of these Winston Cup stars, he's on yeah, probably like a Bobby Labonte or a Jeff Burton level. Guy that won a lot of races, not a championship, but he indeed was a future champion in the Kart Series. We will miss him, not only because he was a great race car driver, but a great person as well. This is a tragedy uh, for all of us, and uh, I can't express you how sad I feel. The emotion spoke for itself. Adrian Fernandez said he would trade in his million dollar payday at the California Speedway to have Greg Moore back. It was a true sad day for the kart series and all of motorsports. He's up there in the sky, and uh, you know, we just, these uh, are, are messages that God sent to us. I'm so sad. And it, there is no, there is no word, there is nothing. There is, there is nothing that, uh, no satisfaction will pay this back, but uh, we need to understand why things happen. <laughs> it's just... <laughs> It's so hard because um, um, <clears throat> Greg <clears throat> was such a good friend of us. We've been racing for a while and uh, we have shared so many <clears throat> good moments inside and outside the racetrack. If we could, if we could just uh, have a moment of silence for Greg. Appreciate it. Thanks. Simply put, Greg Moore was a good guy. He was smart, good looking, and he had a great career ahead of him. The kart series actually thought about canceling the banquet on Monday night after this tragedy, but after speaking to Greg's parents, they said he would want the show to go on. And it did right here in Beverly Hills. And all who attended actually wore this white ribbon. In honor of the three fallen heroes of the kart series this year, Gonzalo Rodriguez, coroner Walter Payton, and Greg Moore. I never realized how much I loved Greg until today and, and yesterday, and it was because he gave so much love all the time. And, and I know we're not supposed to be up here talking about Greg, but I'm, I really can't help it. Um, my heart's very heavy, and it's very difficult to, to, to lift it out of my stomach right now. And uh, I guess sometimes there's just, there's just no answers. And, um, but he loved what he was doing, and... Uh, and he was, he, was, he was just a great guy. And Greg's memory and everything that made him such a great guy will live on in all of us forever. And <clears throat> the one thing that I have learned um, with my years is, um, is about loss, is that we do need to take the time to grieve for him and his family. Um, that's it. Thanks. You're, you're looking at Carl Haas this morning at Phoenix, and even here in Phoenix, in the Winston Cup garage, all of us mourning the loss of Greg Moore. He spoke to Rich, Richard Childress just a few minutes ago, and he said he was truly saddened by what happened last Sunday at the California Speedway. Greg Moore, a great guy, nice guy, truly will be missed. Rick? Absolutely, Bob. His loss will be felt for many months to come. Greg Moore laid to rest earlier this week in his native British Columbia, Canada. The five-time kart winner, IROC contender this year, only 24. All of us here at Race Day pass on our thoughts and prayers to the Moore family and to those in the kart family as well. We'll be right back. Moore was just 24 years old when he was killed in last week's kart race in Fontana. Whether he would even compete was a question because of a motor scooter accident he was involved in the day before. But start the race he did, moving up from 26th to 15th in just three laps. But seven laps later, Moore lost control of his car and hit a retaining wall. He died a short time later at a local hospital. 
Bob Varsha now on the life and career of one of racing's most promising young talents. When Greg Moore won the Milwaukee 200 in 1997, he was just 22 years, one month, 10 days old, making him the youngest driver ever to win a kart champ car event. And he did so by nursing his fuel-starved car to the finish while Michael Andretti loomed in his mirrors. That day, Moore demonstrated a maturity that far surpassed his years. It was that trait of the racer and the man that was repeated over and over this week as people remembered Greg Moore. Despite being just 24 years old at the time of his death, Moore had been a member of the kart community for seven years. After winning the USAC Formula Ford 2000 West Championship, Moore joined the Kart Indy Light Series in 1993. When he won the season opener the next year, he was only 18, and two more victories that season marked him as a star of the future. His star burned even brighter the next year when he won 10 out of 12 races and cruised to the Indy Lights Championship. That domination earned him a champ car ride with Forsyth Racing for 1996, where he confirmed his potential with three podium finishes. 1997 was bittersweet. In addition to his first win in Milwaukee, Moore won at Detroit and had three second place finishes, but there were also many DNFs. Last year, Moore won at Rio and Michigan, adding four more podium finishes and moving to fifth in the Kart FedEx Championship. He was at his best where racing is scariest, in fast corners, one of the reasons he was always so good on the oval tracks. Moore won the 1999 season opener at Homestead, but the team never achieved the reliability needed to make him a championship threat. Moore hoped to change that next year by moving to Team Penske. He had the sheer driving ability to be a race winner, but he also possessed traits that champions need, complete faith in his own ability, a keen analytical mind, and a determined focus. Kart lost a future champion last Sunday. They also lost one of their most popular figures. Moore's love of life, dry sense of humor, his ability to poke fun at himself and situations, and his unpretentiousness all made Greg Moore a vital and much loved member of the kart community. Words, of course, do little to ease the pain of those closest to Greg, but to them we offer something the late Bruce McLaren wrote 35 years ago when he expressed his grief at the loss of a teammate. McLaren wrote, The news that he had died was a terrible shock to all of us, but who is to say that he had not seen more, done more, and learned more in his few years than many people do in a lifetime. To do something well is so worthwhile that to die trying to do it better cannot be foolhardy. It would be a waste of life to do nothing with one's ability, for I feel that life is measured in achievement and not in years alone. Greg Moore did indeed live a very full life. A memorial service for Greg Moore was held last Wednesday. The Prime Minister of Canada was there, along with drivers Dario Franchitti, Paul Tracy, Max Pappas, Jacques Villeneuve, and many others. The final event of the kart season continued after Moore's accident, and the series championship went down to the final lap. When we come back, a look at that battle from the view of the two teams involved. Only 22 starts in Moore's resume. Could this be the day for Greg Moore and the players team from Canada? I don't think Michael has enough Look time. There, Moore thinks he has it won with his fist in the air. He takes the checkered flag and resets the record as youngest winner of a PPG Kart World Series event. Mario Andretti on the wall can only get on the radio and say, nice try. Neil Mickelright and the crew they will have a celebration tonight. What a breakthrough for the Canadian Greg Moore. Blundell in the middle of the racetrack. Defensive position. Michael Andretti doing the same in what is now third place. And Blundell slows. Moore is at the lead. Blundell is out of fuel. And it has all come apart for the PacWest teammates. Victory. Second straight win. For Greg Moore, Michael Andretti second, Jill DeFerrin unofficially third, and Jimmy Vassar a near thing in fourth. Is it possible that first and second place run out of fuel on the last lap? Out of turn for the last quarter, the run to the checkered flag. Greg Moore is going to take his first win of the 1998 season. A brilliantly driven race. Alex and Arnie in a fine second position, but the championship means that Moore further extends his title lead. Does he have the horsepower despite that smoke from the back of the car? 
Greg Moore draws to a couple of car lengths away, and he will win the US 500. And I believe Jimmy Vassar hung on for a second over his teammate as Alex Zanardi's engine coughs its last. And I can tell you, Scott Perot was right. You don't want to lead the last lap. Greg Moore passed him. And look at that. Greg Moore about to take the first win of the season. He's got about a mile to go on board with Michael Andretti in second place. He's too far back, and it's going to be a reversal of last year's race result when Andretti just picked Moore to the line. Here comes Greg Moore. The checkered flag is awaiting the Canadian, and he wins the opening round of the 1999 championship. And they'll be delighted with that. Mercedes taking the first win of the year. Is it possible to be perfect? Probably not. Most of us will go through life just trying our best. But if you listen to those who spoke about Greg Moore this week, you might think he was personal perfection. Believe me, I think I read most of it and heard most of it and through all the tears and all the sorrow, there wasn't a single bad word, nothing. Now for many, his record of five wins in four seasons and the youngest to ever win a kart race will be his legacy. And as memory fades, as it will, the record book will stand as a better test of time. But for me, Greg Moore will always be that nice guy from Maple Ridge, B.C., who lived his dream. That nice guy. And as we race through our lives, that is a legacy we may want to live by, too. A Child with a Dream Greg Moore became a man who lived his dream. How can you pick a highlight from a life like that? Um, I would have to say the 1995 Indy Light season. I mean, that's a season that will go down in history and probably never be beaten. Uh, to win 10 of 12 races, lead 65 or 68 percent of the laps during that season. I mean, it's just one of those years that everything just clicked. Steve had a perfect car for me. I think I drove it fairly well. You know, we finished second at Detroit, leading in Vancouver before he got knocked out. And, and then obviously, Milwaukee. I mean, 1997 Milwaukee. No one will ever be able to take that away. That's where I realized my lifelong dream is to, to win my first ever IndyCar race. Greg Moore, a racer whose life was his sport, but a young man who kept a balanced perspective. There are days when someone's going to be better, be it Michael Andretti, Alex Zanardi, Jimmy Vassar, Dario, Paul, I mean, Patrick. You just don't know. You know, one day, it could be your day, and there are days when everything's not going to go away, and if we've got a fifth-place car, we have to try and put it to third, but you can't try and take it past the limit to first. Greg drove with a passion that brought success on the track, but his true success was in what he gave back away from the track. It's scary, it's scary to think that I'm a role model, but yeah, I mean, obviously I am. Um, when I was growing up, I looked at Ayrton Senna because he was my favorite driver, and I, I tried to emulate him when I was in the go-kart. You know, I wanted to be just like Ayrton. And, um, you know, uh, being a basketball player, hockey player, football player, baseball, like you said, if, if once you get to the pinnacle and you're a top-notch athlete, a world-class athlete, you are a role model. There's no doubt about it. Greg Moore, if he was only one thing in his 24 years, he was without doubt his father's son. You know, he had the, he had the drive to, when I said I wanted to try it, to go out and buy a go-kart, when he knew what, it, what the, you know, what racing was all about, knew that it was a very intense sport, but he had the, the guts to go out and do it. Um, you know, and then just the faith in my abilities all the way along. And then also, you know, you, you can't, you, you got to look at Steve Chalice. I mean, he's been with me since 1991 as my engineer. And I can almost guarantee you there's no one up and down this pit lane that has that eight-year relationship with their engineer. Greg Moore, focused on his goals and a driver who knew what he wanted and gave his all. Uh, since I was 10 years old, I'd watch Ayrton Senna, Rick Mears, Alan Shear, Alan Shear Jr., Michael, Mario. And you'd watch these guys, and that's what I wanted to do. I mean, it was, I wanted to do that one day. Honestly, deep down inside, I wanted to, but I didn't think there was ever a chance I would. Um, 
you know, a kid growing up in Coquitlam and Maple Ridge, there's no way that you can, you know, 99.999% of the people won't be able to do it. But with uh, the faith that my dad had in me and, and other people along the way, here we are. Thank you, Greg. Thank you for living your dream. But even more, thank you for your friendship. When Fram Speed Zone returns, Motormouth remembers his friend. Motormouth. Brought to you by Fram. Pay a little now or a lot later. In the early 80s, when the Formula One traveling circus first paid a visit to Detroit, a 30-year veteran of that series told me flat out there were no second-generation drivers because first-generation drivers didn't live long enough to have families. That was not, of course, entirely true, but he was most serious when he said it. And it helped explain how deaths at the racetrack were dealt with in the first half century or so of the sport. The theory was, in those days, if one wanted to survive emotionally, one had to be terse and cold about such matters. One could certainly not afford to get emotionally involved with other drivers unless you wanted to go to a lot of friends' funerals. In those days, it was a good idea to accept fatalities with a cool nod of the head, or no nod at all and simply move on, business as usual. Those that grieved openly were seen as weak. Death still stalks the path that motor racing walks, but now when it visits, those most closely connected are allowed to grieve publicly, to express their sorrow in the open. The death of driver Gonzalo Rodriguez at Laguna Seca earlier this year was the loss of a man not that well known in CART, nor North America. Yet it was a loss felt deeply in the CART family. His loss was their tragedy, and they grieved openly, without reservation. Last Sunday, racing claimed a young man that we all knew a lot better, a young man that we all admired, a young man we called friend, and that we cared a great deal about. No one turned and moved away without a look backward. No one chose denial over more meaningful human emotion. No one wondered about, nor complained, nor found it unusual when the post-race victory ceremonies were canceled, nor when remaining drivers broke down as they were informed of Greg's passing. No one found it the least bit unusual that the drivers sequestered themselves for prayer and remembrance. No one doubted Adrian Fernandez when he said his victory did not matter. And everyone believed Juan Montoya when he said Greg did not deserve to die. None of them was judged weak nor foolish for claiming Gonzalo Rodriguez as a friend in September, though they had barely met him. None of them is judged weak nor foolish for grieving to the very center of their being over the loss of Greg Moore. The question is asked by some, why would any driver continue racing? Those that ask will simply never understand that the very fact they will race again celebrates, in a meaningful way, their own lives and those of Gonzalo Rodriguez and Greg Moore.